Hello, this is Jameson Mitchell, and I'm here again in this space doing a weekly card reading video. In the recent past, I've been doing my weekly readings using the Lenormand, and previous to that, I was doing a series over the course of six months called Your Week in Tarot, and I was doing weekly readings using the Tarot. This week, I'm going to do a little bit of a departure, just trying to keep things a little fresh. And I got a new Lenormand deck. An interesting thing about this deck, and so let me introduce it, it is the New York Lenormand, and it is by Robert Place, who is an esteemed scholar when it comes to tarot, and I have some of his decks and books in my own personal collection, but he is very um, well um, educated in tarot. He's also very acclaimed. He also um, has quite a following. So he has bridged over from Tarot to Lenormand. His first Lenormand deck, and I guess it could be considered a Lenormand. It is um, somewhat like that. It's called the Burning Serpent Oracle, and it was a collaboration with him and Rachel Pollock. And since then, he has now um, created the New York Lenormand, which is actually a reproduction of a Lenormand deck of cards called um, the Madame Moreau Fortune Cards. And so the interesting thing about this deck is that for me, it bridges the worlds of Lenormand and Tower for me because instead of playing cards, which I love normally on a Lenormand deck, this particular deck has tarot cards inserted on it. So if you look, for instance, like this is the Clover, it has the Seven of Pentacles, the Tower, Six of Swords. But instead of playing cards, each card has a tarot card on it. And so this was how I actually got into divination. I had a dream where I was reading playing cards and doing some research on the symbolism of playing cards in a dream, I found out that playing cards were related to tarot cards. And that's how I found out about tarot cards because I had never heard of a tarot card or seen a tarot card prior to that. So that was how I got into tarot because I um, went and purchased a tarot deck instead of uh, reading playing cards. Now somewhere down the line, I did think to myself, I wonder if I was really supposed to be reading playing cards. So. Um, what happened after that was I discovered another dream. I discovered that my way of reading playing cards is closely related to how they would correspond to the minor arcana in tarot. So that's typically one way I read playing cards. So I bridge the gap between the traditional uh, cardomancy meanings of the cards and then what I have learned in my own experience of reading tarot. So I'm going to be using this deck and this is the intention I have for the week. As I film this video, it is the 13th of September and those of you who are sensitive or uh, do energy work or are into astrology or anything like that might be aware that we are now in a period of a solar eclipse and in addition to that we're experiencing a a new moon in the sign of Virgo and so I won't go into what the astrological implications of that are because there are plenty of wonderful um, astrological professionals on YouTube who could explain that far better than I could so if you're interested in that aspect of it I encourage you to uh, go to your search bar in YouTube and put in um, the astrological significance of a solar eclipse and the new moon in Virgo. But one of my viewers kind of suggested to me doing a Lenormand reading based on the significance of this astrological energy that we are all experiencing. So I thought what I would do is I would do a three card reading with this deck kind of like doing a Lenormand and Tarot tag team. So it's going to consist of three cards and I'm going to read it first from the perspective of the Lenormand and then I'm going to take another look and see what Tarot's turn says about this energy. So taking the deck in, the ha in my hands, going to shuffle the cards 
And I'm just basically asking the question, what do we need to know about what these energies of this eclipse and this new moon be bringing us? Because we all collectively could experience it one way, but as each individual, we're all going to have our own personal experience of that. So, going to get cards are getting sharp, mixed up there, which is probably a good sign. Okay. I think they like it better this way. <laughs> And then I'm going to take the deck and I'm going to cut it into three. Assemble the piles back together. And then I'm going to take the pile, fan it out. And then I'm just, for the purposes of this reading, like I said, I'm going to pull three cards as I feel led. And these three cards will make up our reading. So we're going to be looking at this from the perspective of the, of the Lenormand first, because like I said, each oracle speaks a different way. And I read the first card or the center card as the first card, because it will give us what the focus is. So keeping in context with the question, this card will show us what the focus could be for each of us as individuals or as a collective about the energies of this solar eclipse and new moon. Okay. So this is the fish, and the fish typically represents wealth or abundance. So this card could be asking us to focus on our, our ability to be abundant and how we look at wealth and prosperity. So I'm looking at this, sometimes this card represents for me, you know, going deeper because of the fish being under the water. So this card could ask us to be going deeper in terms of our, our belief about wealth and prosperity and being abundant. So that would I, I would see as the focus. And then the two cards on each side will be flanking it. Okay. Here on the left of the fish, we have the rider. And so now the rider is a card that represents the arrival of something. So I see this as being the arrival of the solar eclipse, and uh, the new moon energies. Now, the rider is also about news or messages being delivered. So this could be about, you know, the energies having something to say and bringing a message. Now, keeping that in mind, with Lenormand, it's always important when we're dealing with a card like the rider to be looking and paying attention to the direction that the rider is facing. So the rider is facing, again, the, the fish. So it could be about the arrival of abundance, the arrival of prosperity, um, how our, the message could be about, again, going deeper with how we experience abundance and prosperity in our lives. So I'm looking at it from a more spiritual perspective in this regard, but that's what the energy is bringing in. The new moon, from what I understand, is all about creating new things. And so one of the things that we could be creating would be a level of abundance, you know, going deeper with that and, and letting that be expressed through uh, whatever means that we choose to allow it. So I'm seeing that as those two cards. Then here on the other end, and this is a wonderful card to have as the outcome. The bear is a card that represents strength and power. So again, it could be that the energies that we're experiencing are very powerful, very strong. It could also be a call or the message here going with the writer. The message could be, how are we going to stand in our own power? How is this energy going to make us stronger? The other thing about the bear is that the bear is a card of resources. So again, this is about you know, how are we going to be more resourceful with the things that we have in terms of our own sense of abundance. Abundance might not necessarily be 
the idea of gaining more or having more. It could be the idea of being resourceful with the abundance that we already have. If you look at this line, this could be considered the past, the present, and the future. So if the future is the bear and it's about acknowledging our own sense of resourcefulness, then this would be the present and the message here, going at the right, or the message could be in this present moment, realizing how abundant you are. Rather than looking at your experience from a place of lack and limitation, how can you look at it as being abundant and, and understanding that at this moment in time that all your needs are being met? So that would be the way I would look at it from the perspective of the Lenormand. So as you know, though, there are other things that we can do. If we were going with the Lenormand aspect and these were playing cards rather than the Minor Arcana from Tarot, we would have the Nine of Hearts, we would have the King of Diamonds, and we would have the Ten of Clubs. So there's no need for me to do the hidden dynamic here. But what I could do is look at it from the perspective of adding all the pips together. So we would have a 9 and a 13. That would give us 22. And then the 10 would give us 32. So the 32nd card in the deck is the moon. So the moon, when it comes up, represents looking at things because this card is about recognition, so it's about recognizing certain signs. This is also a card about intuition, so it's about honoring your intuition. This is also a card about our work, our, our careers. Um, so it could be, a, for some of us, a focus on our careers and what we feel that we're called to do. That's how I look at the word vocation. What is it that we're called to do? This may be an idea or the time for us to step into that. For some of us, our careers might be, you know, to present ourselves as a leader and an authority or a person of influence. So how can you work towards creating more of that in your work or your career this week? The other thing about your work or career, how can you be more resourceful in your career? Let's say the idea here is about recognition. So if you're on the career track and you want to possibly get a promotion, which would also allow you to make more money because the fish is also a money card. What would you need to do? How would you need to be seen? How can you get yourself recognized? Because this is a card about being seen, being noticed. What would you need to do in order for that to happen? The other thing here with the inset, this is the Eight of Cups, but if this were a playing card, it would be the Eight of Hearts. And so the Eight of Hearts in Cardamancy is um, a change of heart card. So this is about uh, a spiritual journey, a spiritual departure, saying that this phase of your life that you're moving in is that it's a solo journey. It's about leaving the past behind. It's about looking at the things that no longer serve and support you. And actually, that's very interesting that this would come up because that's part of the energy of the new moon being in Virgo. It's about releasing and letting go of the things that you no longer need. So I find it very interesting that the inset corresponds to that. The other thing about this particular card is about phases of the moon. And here we are talking about the new moon. The other thing about the moon and the inset of the eight of cups or the eight of hearts is that it can represent a full month in time. So it's about paying attention to what you're experiencing over the course of the next month. Even though we're looking at the video in context to, or the reading in the video in the context to a week, this is asking us to go beyond that and kind of look at what we might be experiencing over the course of the next month, that that's going to be significant. The other thing about this particular card, and I'm going with the inset here more than the moon card itself, is that I sometimes see this card as the Amethyst Rose card. So for those of you who uh, like working with stones, appreciate stones, things of that nature, this card can sometimes represent carrying a piece of amethyst either in a, uh, as a form of jewelry or as holding onto the stone and putting it in your pocket or carrying it on your person because that's a stone of spiritual purification and we're all being asked to 
if you subscribe to that, if you do crystal work and you know that um, the stones work in your particular spiritual path, then you're being encouraged to work with amethyst um, as a tool for your spiritual purification. So that's one way of looking at this reading. So again, from the Lenormand's perspective, this is about the arrival of the energies itself, um, bringing about news or messages, and those news or messages could pertain to how we experience abundance and prosperity. And also to, in addition to that, moving to the bear, as we move through the energies of this um, solar eclipse and new moon, how can we step into our power? How can we be stronger? How can we become more resourceful? So that's how I'm looking at that. And so now we're going to shift gears and we're going to look at it from the perspective of tarot. So the Lenormand's going to tag tarot and tarot's now up. <laughs> All right. And so now looking at it from the perspective of tarot, because in the previous segment I said that Lenormand had tagged tarot, so now tarot's up. And going with the center card being our focus, and I'm going to come as close as I can so you can see the image. Hopefully that will work. So now the image here is the King of Pentacles. And so whenever the King of Pentacles is our focus, this card is, again, keeping with the same meaning of the fish, this card is also about wealth, abundance, and prosperity. If you look at the image, the king is sitting in the lap of luxury. So he is said to have the Midas touch. So this, again, Pentacles are all about how we value things and the worth that we place on things. So the energies of this eclipse and new moon are asking us to take a look at what we place value on in our lives. He is the sign of Taurus and Taurus astrologically is known as the sign of ownership and possessions. So it keeps in with the idea, anything that we own, we have placed a certain value on and we have assigned it some worth in our lives or else we wouldn't own it. So this week we're being asked to look at what we really value in our lives. And the other thing about the pentacles for me, from a spiritual standpoint, yes, it's a suit about you know, the material and the physical. And so again, that one side of it being about the things we own and the value that we place on those things, but from a place of um, spirituality or um, the intangible parts of ourselves, this suit is also about our own sense of worth, our self-worth and our self-value. So this card, King, he's all about mastery, achieving mastery. So one of the things we may be called to do is to look at our own sense of worth and value and how can we see the value, see the worth that we are as individuals intrinsically, our own intrinsic worth and value and how can we radiate that out into the world. Now the other thing about the King of Pentacles and again keeps with the idea of the fish is that this is a card of self-employment. So for those of us who are called to work for ourselves, this card is asking us to be more mindful of how can we serve in a way that allows people to see the value that we bring to the table, the value that we have in our products, our services, our offerings. And the only way that can happen is if we see the value in what it is that we offer first. You know, again, this is a spiritual principle. It goes from the inside out, not from the outside in. So it depends on how you're viewing your sense of value. Are you getting your value from things out in the world around you? Or are you getting your sense of value and worth from within you and letting that radiate out? So that's how I'm seeing the King of Pentacles. Over here on the left, the card, the writer, has the inset of the Nine of Cups. And so now this is a wonderful card to receive in a reading because it is known in tarot as the Wish card. So this is the week where we are being encouraged to, and new moons are all about creating something new. So what is it that you really hope and wish for your life? What would you like to see made manifest? The nine in tarot is a number for me that represents attainment, but it's also about wisdom gained through experience. So 
based on the wisdom that you have gained from your life experience up to this point, what are you hoping and wishing to create at this point moving forward? And how can you get about the business of doing that? The other thing about the Nine of Cups, this card is also about being fulfilled, being happy, and being satisfied. And so here's what I know to be true from my own experience about looking at our ability to be prosperous, to be wealthy, and to be abundant. It starts by being happy and fulfilled and satisfied with what you already have. There is a saying that is, um, it goes like this. Um, how can you be the master of much, which would be the King of Pentacles, when you aren't mastering what it is that you already have? So sometimes what it is, is that when we're hoping and wishing for something, is that we're not being in the present moment and appreciating what it is that we have now. So if you are hoping and wishing for something um, down the line, it's one of the things that could be help you, helpful for you from a spiritual standpoint is to appreciate what it is that you have now. Um, the Nine of Cups is a card of parties and celebrations. So celebrate what it is that you have now. Celebrate who you are now. And as you do that and be present in that, then you're opening the door for more to come your way in the future. And I say more to come in the future because a writer is all about something coming your way. But it, it starts with being appreciative for what it is that you have in the present moment. Okay. And so going to the other side, here we have the Ten of Wands. So now the Ten of Wands is a card that represents being, um, it's a challenging card, it can be, about being burdened, being um, overworked, um, taking on too much. So one of the things we could experience, and this is possibly physically, is that we may feel physically fatigued, drained, tired, our bodies need a rest because we've been pushing it, pushing it, and pushing it. And so for me, I know one of the challenges I get is that when I push myself too much, that's when I usually get something like a cold. It's usually uh, my body will create an experience for me to get some rest because that would be the only way I would get it. <laughs> I'm learning to be better about that, but that's just one, one of the experiences I, I get. So this card um, is asking us to consider, you know, that we don't, going with the bear, power ourselves along to the point that we wind up tapping our energy and our reserves, our resources, our physical resources, that we tap ourselves out and we do ourselves a disservice this way. The other thing about the Ten of Wands that I always stress to people is that this is the uh, card that represents taking on the responsibilities of other people. So one of the things we may be asked to clear and release and let go is asking ourselves when it comes to all the things that we are doing, asking ourselves, is this really my responsibility or have I chosen to take on the responsibilities of other people? And in doing so, sometimes we think that we are helping the other people out, but we may be enabling them and robbing them of the opportunity to be responsible for themselves and enabling them to just stay the way they are. So this card is asking us when we're taking a look at the level of responsibility that we have, asking ourselves, do I need to take all of this on? Do I need to have the world or the weight of the world on my shoulders? Do I need to be doing everything for everybody? Or can I really take a step back and reevaluate and seeing if I'm taking on things that other people could be doing? Now, in terms of having your own business, and again, this is a lesson I learned both in my corporate experience and in my own personal private business or you know now that I'm self-employed I went from one being an employee to now being self-employed but when I was in my corporate job and I was a manager the ten of wands was my biggest lesson I had the misconception that I had to do all the work myself and what happened was I didn't learn about delegating until it was too late and by that point I had burned myself out so that's the extreme with the ten of wands the ten of wands is a burnout card so don't let yourself get to the point that you burn yourself out. If there are things that you can delegate to other people, and I'm talking to the people who are either professionals or having their own business, this is just a rule of business, learn the art of delegation before you burn yourself out. Now, from a spiritual or personal perspective, this card is saying, see that you are just as valuable, going with the King of Pentacles, 
as you believe other people to be of value and say, you know, be honest with yourself about the level of work that you're taking on, the level of responsibility. And if it's turning out to be a burden, then you are being charged with the idea of letting certain things go, giving them back to the people who may rightfully need them and, and letting them do the work that they need to do with those things. So again, Nine of Cups, this is a perfect time to start thinking about what it is that you hope for, wish for, that you would like to see fulfilled. Um, appreciating what it is you have in the present moment and being happy with that, which would lead to the King of Pentacles being the focus. It's about mastering our sense of worth and value. And the only way you can really do that is to first appreciate what it is you have now and let that be um, um, the priming of the pump for more to flow in, keeping with the imagery of the fish. And then moving over to the Ten of Wands. If you're experiencing the, the challenging side of the energies, it could be that you're experiencing fatigue, um, burnout, um, and, uh, you're working too much, you're taking on too much, then this may be an indication of you needing to take some rest and the energies of it could be the thing that kind of just sidelines you so you can get that rest, especially if you're the type of person who likes to push yourselves and always doing, doing, doing. The other thing about this is if you have your own business, then these two cards are asking you to be mindful of the art of delegation or I said your own business, but even if you work for someone else, it's about looking at your level of responsibility. Are you taking on too much? Are you doing too much? And if you are, how can you farm out the things that other people can do, especially if those things um, are not your level of strength, going keeping with the bear. If those aren't the things that you're strong in, then by all means, delegate them to the people who uh, could best do them. So these are the cards. So as I did with the playing card inserts, when I imagined them as being the playing cards rather than the minor arcana cards, we can take the numbers again and see what the overall lesson is from the major arcana. So here we have the nine. The king again would be in this case, um, in Cardamanti, the king is 13, but in Tarot, it would be 14. So 9 and 14 is 23, and then when you take the 10, it would be 33. So 33, since there are only 22 major arcana cards, we would take the 3 and the 3 and add them together, and then we would get 6. So the 6 card in the major arcana is one of my own personal cards, so I'm very familiar with this card. It is the Lovers. And so now, let me first say that this is the Lovers card from the Lovers Tarot um, by Jane Lyle and Oliver Burston. It was the deck that was closest at hand, so I, it was the one I grabbed first. When the Lovers card comes up, it represents being at a, a crossroads in life and needing to make a major life choice. So what we could experience this week is coming to a crossroads and saying, where do I go from here? And needing to make a major life choice from that place. If we do that, the lover's card is asking us to make the choice from an emotional standpoint, because this card can represent our heart, uh, our heart space and our feeling nature. So basically, how do we feel about the situation? How do we feel about each of the choices? And if we were to choose that, how would we feel about making that choice? This is all about coming from the heart. The other thing about this card is that this card is assigned for me the Archangel Raphael. And Raphael is the patron saint of healing. So this card is a major healing card. And so whether you believe in the idea of angels or not, it's really not about that. It's about inviting the healing energies that are moving through this experience to come into your life and address the issues that need healing. So now here's the thing about healing. If you set the intention, everything is about intention. If you set the intention for healing to come up or you know to be your experience, then what's going to happen is that all the all the things in your life that need healing are going to come up. So since I'm going in this direction, the other thing about the Lover's card for me is that this is about attraction. So this card is also about working with the spiritual principle of the law of attraction. And so in that regard, we call everything that is unlike itself contrast. So if we're talking about setting the intention for healing, then the contrast would be everything 
that needs to be healed is going to come up and you're going to need to feel it, need to experience in order for it to be healed. It's got to come up so it can be cleared and healed. And so that's this. So you have to be mindful of the intention that you set because every experience you have is going to be in alignment with the intention. And so this card is asking us to look at our thoughts. The man represents our thoughts and our feelings, which is the woman, because those two elements represent how things become manifest. It's a combination of our thoughts and our feelings. So again, the lesson with the lover's card is about looking at your choices. Everything that we have experienced in our life has come as a result of a choice that we've made. So it's about looking at your choices. And if you don't like the experience that you're having right now, it's okay. It's not meant for you to beat yourself up or put yourself on a hook for all of that thing. All you're being asked with the, with the lover's card is to choose again. Choose differently. Abraham the the wisdom teachers from the law of attraction would say to choose a better feeling thought that's all it is it's just to choose again and going with what i said about the ten of wands sometimes what it is that we're being asked to do with the lover's card is to choose ourselves some people see this as a card that represents relationships with other people and yes while that's true the other most significant relationship you will ever have is the relationship you have to yourself so how can you see your relationship with yourself as being valuable? And one of the things that you may have to do is to make choices from that relationship. You may have to choose yourself this week. And so that is going to wrap up our Lenormand Tarot Tag Team Reading for the Week. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like it, share it. If you'd like to see more of this type of reading in videos to come in the future, please subscribe to my channel. And this way you can get an update every time I post a new video. So again, this has been your weekly card reading. I am Jameson Mitchell, and I so look forward to sharing this space here with you again in the next video. And until then, take care.